The 1920s uh, often uh, is thought of in many circles as a time of liberation for women. Part of this comes from the promise of technology. All of the new appliances that were available because of mass production, uh, vacuum cleaners, electric irons, washing machines, these were all uh, promised to women uh, to provide them freedom. Uh, that uh, this would decrease the amount of time they had to spend on chores and then they could go out and do other things. They could uh, get a job, they could help uh, with reform efforts and such. The problem with this is that when women bought the work, the uh, appliances, it didn't really have any discernible effect to reduce the time they spent on chores. First of all, working class women couldn't afford the appliances anyway, so they were still stuck doing it traditional ways. Middle class women uh, bought appliances but then fired the domestic help that they used to hire so they actually spent more time doing chores than they had previously and the wealthy were uh, the wealthy women didn't have to worry about that anyways so there really isn't a move towards breaking the traditional gender roles uh, oftentimes the 1920s are characterized uh, with the flapper uh, flappers were these liberated free women that broke the traditional mold of wife and mother uh, they could go be free they could go out party and they drank they showed off their knees uh, they wore different clothes. Um, they broke from those traditional gender roles. However, that is the exception that proves the rule. Very few women were flappers during the time period. Most women were still uh, in the old traditional role, sometimes we call it the cult of domesticity or the cult of true womanhood, of wife and mother. Uh, those are that that is the the role that women had and it's reinforced by the media and advertisements of the time that paint women as being happy in their roles as wife and mother and that's the only appropriate method uh, that they should live their lives